What's happening guys? Thanks for tuning back into another episode here with me, the Rust Belt Mechanic. So today I don't really have any other products that I'm going to be reviewing for you, but I really wanted to bring up a couple of key points that I've really been getting a lot of comments about. So as you saw in the description there, we're going to be talking about some advice for younger techs, what to listen to, and what kind of noise not to listen to is the bigger point that I wanted to get to. So we're going to get into talking about that here in just a second. all situated on the stool here just for my my good time of ranting but when I started this channel I didn't expect for it to take off like it did so one of the things that I wanted to be mindful about was the comments that I received on the channel and whether it be positive or negative as long as the comments were rude foul obnoxious then I didn't do anything with them positive or negative people have their opinions of what they say and just now I've kind of gotten to the point where I can say, you know what, I have an opinion about your opinion as well. I usually don't let the haters get to me and, you know, getting those guys on your uh, soft spots is just not worth the time that it is. So one of the biggest things that I had to comment over is the guys who are always saying, man, why are you getting all these new technicians dreams up? Why are you getting their hopes all build up for a career that has nothing to promise for them and to that I say a big old BS for you new technicians out there the game here in the mechanics world is what you make it to be the guys who keep on telling you nah whatever I went through 30 years and I never got you know shown the decency I never made much of any money for it big old BS again you guys you didn't give two shits about the work that you did. You didn't care for your career. You didn't push yourself. You didn't get those certifications. You didn't reach those limits. You guys didn't set goals for what you really wanted to get to and achieve. Now I understand life does happen from time to time, but you know what? When life happens, you get up stronger and better than you were before. And the guys that I know that have let life beat them down, they've worked themselves up to be the bigger better people that I know today they really have worked themselves up to a level that lots of other people haven't seen just being able to go through that turmoil if you want to be that guy who just wants to come to work you want to get your job done you know you want to find the job jump between mechanics places here and there just to try to find the best buck around then you know what you're gonna be a mediocre technician if you really have the aspirations that, you know, I just want to get the job done, then yeah, whatever, you know, we'll get it better next time. Or if, you know, that training, if they pay me more for it, then I'll go get more training. When you're going to end up in that stalemate, just butting heads back and forth. And what kind of point is that one to work for an employer that you just don't enjoy working for and you just butt heads back and forth? Why don't you end up working with them? Get those certifications before they ask for them. Want to have that drive to come into work early, get the work done, get the work done later, you know, maybe stay a little bit later. Go and get those certifications. I just can't tell you guys that enough. This job is what you make it to be. If you want to be the best technician there is, then you can make it like that. I'm telling you guys, it seriously is possible. And that's regardless of whether it's the independent field or the dealership life. As I talked before with Mr. JRC54, which if you guys haven't checked out his channel, you need to go do that. It really doesn't matter what field you're in. If you strive to be the best of the best, you go get all those certifications, you aspire to be that best technician, you 
make a name for yourself and you try to get every single job done, every single car done to the best of your ability, then you are going to succeed in this business. That I can damn near guarantee to you guys. Now one thing that I can't guarantee you guys right off the bat is that you're gonna make six figures right off the bat. It's not gonna happen. You guys do have to put in the time, the hard work, the experience is gonna be where it is for you guys. Yes, the certifications and the drive are gonna get you a bigger step up on the rest of your competition than the guys that you work with than a lot of the rest of them will, but the experience is where it's gonna be at. Once you guys get the years in and get the experience and you continuously put that hard work forward is really when it's gonna pay off. So for me personally, once I graduated, I started right into the flat rate system. Now I understand that the flat rate system does have its flaws, but I wouldn't change it for what it is because it gives you that opportunity to make more money. I would not rather be able to come to work and just make the time that I'm in here and I know there's guys that say, oh, that's where everybody cuts their corners. If you work the flat rate system how you're supposed to work the flat rate system, you don't cut corners. Because if you cut corners, then you're just asking for comebacks. And comebacks are just negative time and negative money. You're going to spend more time with your fuck ups than you are working on those big ticket items that you really want to have. So when I came into the industry, I, I did my two years in school while I went to technical college. And I worked here and was able to work back and forth eight weeks on, eight weeks off. Once I graduated, I went to a full time, as a full time technician, I only made one switch of a dealership in that time. And I actually ended up coming back to the same dealership that I started at. Now within the first three years, I was above $50,000 a year in Hey, from what I have, I was making like right around $21 an hour after the first couple of years of working flat rate, which most guys are like, oh, that's not very good at all. But you also have to remember, I do live in the Rust Belt. I live in the sticks of Ohio. So guys who are making that kind of money, you're doing pretty damn good for yourself. Plus, I also worked at a dealership where we weren't overly flooded with technicians. We have a dealership where they like to give the technicians their nice amount of pay. We like to have the guys who are making the 50, 60, 70 hours a week, you know, it's there for you guys to make. If you want to aspire to have that kind of hours and that have that kind of time done, the time is there for you to do it. They allow us to come in and work evenings, allow us to come in and work on weekends if we really uh, wanted to. So the time is there, the dealership supported us with what we wanted to do. So I'm gonna tell you that then once I was right around seven years into my uh, program here after I had graduated, so that would have been five years after I graduated, I made $80,000 that year. Now, like I said, this may not be something for you guys if you don't want to put that much time and effort, but it is something that you can work for. And then from there, I've just made more here and there. So you are able to put that time in, you're able to put that effort in, it will pay off for you. One of the other comments was regarding tools. Ah, you don't need snap-on tools to, to be a good technician. The best technicians that I've ever seen have been showing up with a five gallon bucket full of tools and a pocket full of whatever quarters and coins that they can put in and listen to music all day. Uh, whatever guys have heard that, yeah, I think you got fed a line of BS too. I know that the tool does not make the technician, neither does the toolbox, but if you're the technician who puts their time, effort, and money into things that you trust and you really want to keep and have for a long time, has a good warranty, has a good finish, has a good fit to what you like, then try through all the different spectrums of, uh, spectrums of tools. I don't have just snap-on tools in this toolbox right here. I do have quite a few things. There are some tools that the Snap-on guy continuously tries to sell me that I refuse to buy for Snap-on. One of them being the uh, the boroscope through Snap-on. Yeah, it works, but you know what? My $78 one that I bought off of Amazon four and a half years ago still does just as good as the latest and greatest boroscope that Snap-on has to offer. So there are some things here and there that just they really don't matter if you purchase that brand, you're just buying the brand name. 
Now in toolboxes, there is a little bit of that stigma to it. You know, the pride in having that nice snap-on box with the nice finish, the nice warranty. I do like to see it, and you know what? Being happier to come to work every day and see this thing, wouldn't you be happier to see that? You know, if I can afford it, then who's to say that I, it's not gonna make me happier kind of guy? So I'm happy for it, and if you guys end up liking snap-on boxes or Mac boxes or whatever floats your boat, then go ahead and buy those things because it's what you want, it's what you feel comfortable with, and you have to come to work and see it every single day so you damn well better like it. So really in closing, for the guys who are out there commenting on these videos, and not just mine, but other videos across the internet that don't tell these technicians that they can make money like this, well, you know what? If you guys will work just as hard in your career, you could have done something just a little bit better than what you've seen. And these new technicians, you guys can do something awesome for yourselves. Make sure that you're gonna be that awesome technician. Aspire to be something greater than the guys that left before you. Aspire to be that technician who can make that 100 grand a year and live comfortably. Be able to buy the nice toolboxes, ride in the nice cars. You know, you work damn hard for your money. Spend it on whatever the hell that you guys want to. Don't let the old guys who are just stuck in their ways dictate what you feel is the right to work in this industry. You guys make your own dreams and you guys can live it. That is about all I have for my soapbox here today. I guess I can step down from it. Ah, that was a pretty good one anyways. Well, thank you guys. I do appreciate all the effort that you guys have been putting into this channel. I will put a link down in the description. I do have merchandise available now over on Teespring. Uh, I do have the Rust Belt Mechanic t-shirts and hoodies alike. We're gonna be keeping those coming out for you guys. I still do have the vinyls available over on my Facebook account. Again, link will be down in the description below. I appreciate you guys tuning into the channel, enjoying this, make sure you subscribe as well. And as always, you guys stay awesome.